great joy to say that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to worship here with us this morning. We are so grateful that you have joined us here today. Our liturgist this morning is Rita. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Has this been crazy weather or what? <laughs> My poor little flowers are starting to come up and I'm like, no. Go back, it's too dark. <clears throat> All right, the opening meditation. What is needed is realization that power without love is reckless and abusive and that love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. Justice at its best is love correct, or correcting everything that stands against love. And that is a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now the call to worship. In the house of God, we are called to enter. To worship and receive the gift of grace. As we step towards this sacred space, we acknowledge all the distract our world. God calls upon us to cleanse our houses of all that does not need, excuse me, that does not find its source in God's love. Together we give ourselves in worship and recognition of our neighbors. Let us worship God. And our opening hymn is as the deer, and you should have one in your hands. Thank <laughs> you. 
the sacred space of worship, seeking their transformation and healing. Make us ready for the kind of turned off, set down world you are seeking to build upon us. We have come to this place of worship to be changed, so turn off our tables and make us whole. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The assurance of God's grace. God's compassion is deep and wide, from everlasting to everlasting. In seeking to transform this world, God's love reaches towards each of us with a tender embrace. Let this be our assurance this day and always. Amen. And now, especially, more special music from that. Sometimes, um, this is Bob's take for the day, uh, sometimes when you think that it's kind of like the end of the world, our lives and what's going on, there's always something to give thanks for. Always something. Whether it's the robins at your bird feeder this morning. Um, there's always something to give thanks for. Guess what the name of the song is? Give thanks. <laughs>
What they did, was it a gift for a special occasion, or was it just because they love you and wanted to get you something? Beverly, she's 87 years old, and she is having uh, open heart surgery. Um, she needs to have it, otherwise she will pass. So big prayers for her that she will get through and survive the surgery. Prayers for Beverly. Prayers for Michelle. Eddie. Prayers for Linnea. 
for Linnea. bow our heads and close our eyes and take a deep breath in and release it. Let's remember who we're praying to. Let's remember who we're giving thanks to. Let's remember who we are inviting into the spaces that they are already in. And let us open our hearts as we pray. Loving God, we give thanks for today. We give thanks for this church that calls us together, for your call to be here, for the ways in which we love and interact and grow together. We give thanks for the gifts that we share with each other, gifts bestowed upon us by you who created us. We give thanks for the return of friends that we don't see as often as we'd like, for Catherine's presence, and quite frankly, for everyone who gathers here this morning. Lord, how we love you. How we hope you see our time and our presence here as a gift to you, as our gratitude for all that you do in our life. And we know in that same breath that you see all of what we carry that you know what burdens we come here with, that you know the people who we think about incessantly, day in and day out. We pray for those who are traveling. We give thanks for those who have come home successfully and we think about those who are in process or getting ready to go on big trips. And we ask for safety and comfort. 
travel arrangements that work out, plans that are able to be fulfilled. Not too many surprises, but just maybe enough adventure. We pray for those who are going into surgery, who are under the care of doctors and oncologists and all of the healthcare workers who provide services of healing using the wisdom that you bestow upon us to heal each other. Help us to see every healing as a gift from you. Help us to see every attempt at healing as a gift from you. And help us, oh help us, in the moments where it seems that things are not going to work out the way we had hoped, that we can continue that spirit of gratitude when the healing looks like a return to your presence. Lord, be with those who grieve, for those who the grief is fresh, for the surprise and the adaptation still hasn't quite happened. Be with those who are processing, who are trying to find a space and a place and a reason. And Lord, help us to see when there are miracles happening, when goodness is at play. Help us to recognize miracles, even when they're big and small and every size in between. And if you wouldn't mind, give us a few more. We could use a few more miracles down here. Loving one, we're going to say the names of some people today, and this is a mighty list. We know that you are present in every space, in between the names, that you know these people, that you are there with them. You are intimately aware of the challenges that they face, that you are already at work in their lives. And so, let us pray for these people and ask for comfort and peace We pray for Linda and Steve, for Bill and Donna and Spence. We pray for Beverly and Michelle. We pray for Linnea and Bertha and Janae. We pray for Cody and Donna, for Marilyn and Stephanie and their entire family. We pray for Kim and Tom and Bob and Susan and Tom. We pray for all of these people that we have mentioned here today and you of course know the prayers that we pray that we have not spoken out loud this morning. They are no less important. And so we leave them here with you too. We pray for our siblings around the globe, for those that worship with us near and far, and for those who do not know your name, or maybe call you some other name. We pray for those who live in fear of violence, under threat of natural disaster. We pray for just peace. And we pray for the leaders of this world, for hearts that are more focused on just peace than the almighty dollar or some kind of power. We pray for your people, that we remain calm in anxious times, 
that we remember to look for joy and that we accept just every now and then your invitation to play, to engage, to be joyful in our worship and our praise, and to keep the spirit moving among us with our deep breaths and our sighs. We give thanks that we are yours and you are ours now and forevermore. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from John 2, 13 to 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple with the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told, he told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house the marketplace. His disciples remembered that they were written, See over your house for the consuming. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you rise it up in three days? But here's the seeking of the temple of his body. There after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus was spoken. The word of God for the people of God. And the seed of God. I'm being very mindful that our sound system is a little touchy this morning, so if it gets weird, just let me know. I'll do my best to fix it. We refer to John as the Gospel Written by Committee, mostly because it's thought to be the last Gospel written. It reached final form around the end of the first century and weaves together many of the events told in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The Synoptic Gospels, meaning the three share much of their material as well. On the whole, John's Gospel, which was written by an author who was likely very well educated and able to write more freely to a mixed Jewish and Gentile crowd, uses more imagery, more metaphorical writing, for this reason, we also often call John the mystic gospel. And we can see a good example of this writing in today's passage. All four gospels tell of Jesus' cleansing of the temple. John's telling, though, is just a bit different. While the synoptic gospels tell of this event happening at the near end of Jesus' ministry, John places it in the beginning, right after the miracle at Cana in Galilee, where he turned the water at a wedding into wine. The disciples, having witnessed this, are sure that Jesus is who Jesus says he is, but are maybe trying to figure out what that might mean in a bigger picture kind of way, which makes sense if we consider that in John's telling of this event, the culmination is Jesus' reference to, of his body as a temple that will be broken down and rebuilt in three days. Indeed, the passage ends in the disciples remembering the incident post-resurrection and making sense of the fulfillment of Jesus' words after the fact. If John uses the telling of this event to open up our interpretation through metaphorical meaning, then I see an invitation to do the same. So if we are to consider the body of Christ as a temple, 
that it feels safe to carry this analogy over into present times. Jesus' body as the body of Christ, or maybe more clearly stated, the body of believers, the church. And while I can extrapolate this out to be about the big C church, what lays on my heart is this local church, this church right here. I think about our physical place of worship, the brick and mortar, the lath and plaster, the structure of a worship space. I like to learn about this church's history. I like to imagine the ancestors of this congregation who have been reunited with God in glory. They who have the answers that we still sometimes search for. I like to think about how thrilled we would be to join them someday and watch this congregation continue on in community and wonder and worshipful faith. This building has been here for so much longer than 46 years. This congregation passed down from prayerful heart to prayerful heart, the spirit moving in this space the whole time. It is a gift sanctified by sacrifices in their own right. How blessed we are to be called here together, which leads me to my next point. I like to imagine what our role here as a group will be. How we will take the gifts that have been bestowed to us and use them to further the mission of love in this world that so desperately needs it. I hope that if you like to imagine this too, that we can talk about what you see. Our dreams and our love are united in Christian purpose. We've all been called here to serve each other and our community, which grows when we bravely share and take up a unified and joint mission together. When I was new at this, the general president of the UCC at the time, John Dorhauer, came to talk to a group of me and my peers. He told us to be brave in how we imagined the church, to be bold and to take chances, and to learn from each step we took. Someone asked what we were all thinking, which was, what if we break the church? <laughs> he gave us an answer along the lines of us being unable to do such a thing. And as I grow in faith in this side of the experience, and as I examine the passage today through the lens of the body of Christ as temple, as church, I can't help but think of the resurrection as it applies not only to the body of Christ, but to the body of believers. I wonder how many times this church, this congregation, this body, has been resurrected, transfigured. And my friends, I don't think we aren't in some form of that process here now. To believe in Jesus has many facets, and so you'll be kind to forgive me today if I only focus on a few. But in the spirit of Lent, and in the focus and intention of drawing near and being open to mystery and miracle, to accept our role as witness and yet somehow worker. What does this mean for the body, for our body of believers? If we see Christ's body as representation and vibrant imagery for the body of the church, the congregation, not the structure, then surely what is meant to resurrect by the grace of God will resurrect. No lashes received, no insults hurled, no brave missteps, and certainly no thing meant to break the church will be able to defy a love that can conquer death. We carry the gospel of good news in our hearts and speak the love of God into this space. We take up our crosses and the things that burden us, even in unbearable ways, and we follow Christ all the way through temptation and grief through pain and suffering, through darkness and despair. Because we know that at the end of the darkest times, the stone will still be rolled away. 
And all of the steps, all of these steps, are part of the process. All of the feelings deserve their own time and space to be held and to be felt because if there is anything we know for certain as we traverse this Lenten path, it is that the resurrection cannot be rushed and it cannot be rushed through. That every step of the way invites the revelation of God's self to us. And what we arrive at the empty tomb with will be different, perhaps, than what we had set out with. But Easter is coming. And we are an Easter people. A people that know that there is hope. There is resurrection and it's just over the horizon. It's on its way, sure as the sunrise, sure as a love that guides us to keep moving forward, sure as Jesus was and is the Christ. So friends, let us use our prophetic imagination. Let us imagine what the body of Christ here may be, what it might become. Let us honor our past by leaving a legacy. Let us be bold and brave and loving in our pursuit of the resurrection. Let us become witnesses of God in ways we haven't even dared to dream. If the term corporate worship is a reminder that we worship as the body of Christ, then let's be the body of Christ together. Not in some way that reflects what we humans have mangled the word corporate to mean, but in the way that our deep, deep ancestors in faith knew that worship in community is so much better for our hearts and for our minds and for our spirits than worshiping apart. Let us practice brave love here and take that same brave love out into this world. You know the love, the kind that sees each other as sibling that loves others as we love ourselves, and yes, the kind that takes time to assess where our self-love is lacking so that we don't accidentally love someone less than what Christ calls us to, because we are still working on something within ourselves. Let's be the body of Christ, resurrected many times over by the grace of God and through the work of the Spirit. Let's be an Easter people, the kind that know that there are mysteries and miracles we can't even imagine, but that God and Christ can accomplish in three days. And let us have faith to know that our three days are coming. The kind of people that trust God that we, even when we cannot quite see the vision, just like the disciples who were told of this great thing that would happen, but we have the benefit of hindsight knowing what the disciples couldn't in ways they wouldn't know until after that morning in the garden, that at the end of suffering and doubt and despair, there is redemption and healing and glory. Let's be the church who reminds its people, both those that are here and those who have yet to receive their call to these pews, <coughs> that there is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. Let's lead with love. And friends, when we say amen to this today, let that amen be our joint affirmation to love God and to be this church. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 <coughs> All right. If this morning the ushers can come forward, the richness of God's love extends to all persons and in response to God's abundant compassion, we are invited into a spirit of generosity so that God's love may be known to the very ends of the earth. Today's offering will be given in that spirit. <coughs>
order of worship. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> it's up there. It's there. It's there. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> oh, God, whose richness is found at the table of extravagant love for nature, we entrust these gifts to your care, that they may abound in your steadfast love for all persons. Use them for the building of your beloved community here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. Does somebody need to run and grab Mary Lynn? We are getting ready to do communion. Um, we're grabbing Mary Lynn because she um, likes to do communion with us and we'd like to have her with us for that. Yes, Ellie uh, would like to tell you in the meantime, you can try and break into your cup. Uh, good news, I think we decided that this is the last month this year. We're going to be using these tiny little torture devices. Uh, and so they are difficult. They are. So if you have trouble, you can start now. Nobody's going to judge you. Uh, there's a film that goes on top of the wafer. And then there's a film that goes on top of the juice. And depending on which one you grab, watch out for the juice. You can have quite the experience. So we can start working our way into that now. I always say if you're having trouble, you can find somebody nearby. I'm sure we all feel like it is a worthy cause to help you out. And a gentle reminder that if we see someone struggle and they say they don't need help, we leave them alone until they want it. We make fun of these things, but I am grateful they exist. They help us to bring communion to uh, people who aren't able to join us in churches. And they got us through, you know, COVID. So that was helpful. They serve their purpose. We're grateful for this. All right. You can join me in the liturgy found in your order of worship. We have heard about God, who loved and gave each creature a divine image when creating the world. We have heard about Jesus, a poor man whose family would be the world, a healer whose wounds give life, a teacher whose wisdom traces his love's order in the world, finding the divine in each of us. We have heard how Jesus died and how, for those who loved him, he rose again. We have heard about the Holy Spirit, who breaks the bonds of race and class, gender and creed, to show God's love for everyone. And we have heard that love makes all things new. We come to this table asking for the bread of such blessings. These miracles begin with simple gestures, bread, souls that yearn, hearts that need healing. We bring the bread and the cup. The yearnings and prayers of our souls to the table today, so that miracles may begin in us as it did long ago. Let us pray together. Realizing that we are not perfect, O oh God, we come asking that the miraculous may begin in us today. Guide us and shape us so that we may choose life, even in our brokenness and imperfections. We accept the invitation to your meal as we seek to be new creations in Jesus the Christ. Amen. On his last night living on earth, Jesus took a loaf of bread at the Passover meal, blessed it, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks to God for it, shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The gifts of God for the people of God. All things are ready. 
the bread of life. Take and eat. Pretend you're talking to me. I'll sit. You can just talk. 
Just talk to me. Yeah, talk tell to me. Tell, tell and sell you joy. Tell me. Oh. I can't oh, hear you. Do you want to sweep from the back? Okay. Well, well my joy is that Sophia is here today. She's got my favorite colors on. And she brought me six bucks as a Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> 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 um, this church just lifts me up. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I have two. First, they can talk about the grandmothers. Um, they went to Buffalo for a DI event where they make do inventions and everything. Isabella, Isabella took first. She made a cave, and the reasoning behind her hers was so people could go in and if they needed something in there, she had um, canned goods, she had hygiene things and everything. And so she got first, and then she in turn left it there, and they're donating it in, in, in uh, Buffalo. Haley took third. She only did some of the props, and I can't understand what the invention was, but she helped, she helped, so they took third. And then last Saturday, we had a benefit for Michelle, my friend, um, and with the community, our friends, family, I mean, everybody, we raised over 33000 for the event. So yes. she's going to New York City on the 11th for the surgery. And this prayers was because it's prayers. I on, on my refrigerator there's a magnet and it's part of a biblical verse and it says, In everything give thanks. And I interpret that to mean doesn't mean for everything give thanks. But you can find something to be thankful for in, in everything. And it's the little things like Bob mentioned the Robins. If we just noticed more of those all the time, we'd be a lot happier. If you wait for the big things, you're not necessarily coming. Thank you for sharing. Uh, such a joy to be here in church. This is this is the church that feels like home to me, and I always just get such a swelling in my heart when I come in here, and um, just to be back in this beautiful area. It's. Uh, it's where we lived along in Baptist Hill. That was the longest place I ever lived in my whole life since birth. So I will always call this home. Thank you. Oh, we're so glad you're here. Hi. I'm back. I went to Texas. Um, all the flights were uneventful. All the doors stayed on, the windows stayed on. There was no fights. <laughs> it was a good trip. Um, from Texas, I picked up my sister, and we went down to Houston, and they won a horse race down there. And then we went on to Florida to see my older sister, and we had a tour on this river with a glass bottom boat, and there was manatees that swam right under the boat. We just saw pods of them, and it was just wonderful, and it was warm. And But I came back to good weather, too, though, so I was happy for that. Yeah. <laughs> so glad for you. Ready? She's back. Okay. My joy is um, all the people that bought my Girl Scout cookies because I worked really hard to get all of my Girl Scout cookies and give it to people that need cookies and don't have any and they need help with things. Cemetery and the Elba Cemetery and visited my relatives uh, and, <laughs> and picked off the wreaths that were there. And in the Batavia Cemetery, I saw a robin. Now, what's so unusual about that is, one, it was so February. Two, I feel like I am always the last person on earth to see a robin. <laughs> oh, I saw a robin then. Oh, I've, oh, I've seen robins. I've yet to see a robin. I mean, this has gone on for years and years. And my mother's always been the first one to see a robin. Look, I've not seen a robin yet. You know, we'll go into May. I, I've not seen a robin yet. So it's like, 
it's February, and there was a robin. And I was like, oh my goodness gracious. And that's not the cemetery that my mom was, is buried in. So my grandmother must have put it there. So that was my joy for the week. Well, of course, I have the joy of our first year Girl Scout here, great niece. And also, I thought maybe Sally would mention this, but she didn't, so I will. Delivered to our house yesterday is a chair for Sally, hoping to help her back issues. And it's a stressless chair, and it's beautiful. I sat it in this morning before she got up, and I, I agree, it's wonderful. It's, it's a wonder I'm even here this morning. Well, I guess I can share this with you. Be talking about flowers. Well, there was a couple guys talking at the restaurant, and the one says, "Well, do you know what your wife's flower is?" And he says, "Well, yeah, I think it's Pillsbury, isn't it, honey?" <laughs> continue on in the spirit of your goodness and bless who they are received by. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, friends, it's time for announcements. Okay. Um, this Saturday, um, the 9th, from 7 to 9, we'll be hosting a community game night. Um, and we are going to open this up to everyone in the surrounding communities and all are invited. Bring your favorite game and a friend. We'll have board games, card games, etc., and snacks will be provided. Next Sunday, the 10th, um, we'll be collecting for our one great hour of sharing. It, that is one of four missions offering, the missions offerings of the United Church of Christ. Uh, the Lentil Offering supports the Disaster, Refugee, and Development Ministries at the United Church of Christ within wider church ministries. And speaking of next Sunday, don't forget to turn your clock ahead. Or if you come at your 10 o'clock, service will be over. <laughs> New COVID tests are available in the Fellowship Hall. This past Thursday, we had a very successful Lentil Soup Supper. The speakers were from Light Hill, and it was very enlightening. Below us is scheduled for our remaining lentil soup suppers. Festivities begin at 6. Uh, March 7th is the Community Support Shop with Pastor Kim Parsons. And the 14th uh, Family Promise of Ontario County. 25th, oh, excuse me, 21st, Pay It Forward Movement. And the 28th is Maudry Thursday. Um, Easter flowers are still, I believe you can still sign up for them in the back. Calendar of event, March 6th, yes, March 6th is um, open for prayer, 2 to 3. March 7th is the super, uh, soup supper at 6. March 9th is a community game night. Thank you to our greeters, Mary Lynn and Ellie Babcock. The liturgist greeters for next week, um, uh, the liturgist is Fran. The greeters are Deb Forder and Sheila Hudson. And fellowship hours, Diane Marcells and Edie Thomas. Birthdays is Dave Hudson on 3-5. Um, and if there's any other announcements? Okay. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are always welcome here. We are the United Church of Christ. Friends, our final hymn this morning is number 472 in the Black New Century Hymnal, and I invite you to stand while we sing.
correctly, it is a potluck Sunday. <laughs> and so you are invited to join us. It does not matter if you did not bring anything. Believe me, they just want you to eat. Uh, through that door to the left, there will be food. Follow the smell. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here today. And I hope, I do hope, that we see you again on Thursday night. And if not Thursday, then next Sunday. Now. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. And may he bring you back here rejoicing once again through these doors. All God's people say, Amen.